kidding me? Well, well, well. This is quite that interesting. Hello, hello, and up to all you beautiful souls. Let's see what's going on here. Hello, hello to all you beautiful souls. I'm trying to share this to a group. For some reason, I cannot stream live over to the, uh, over to the screw tube right now. So we're gonna just hang out with the fakest book I ever did see. The fakest book and all the social medias. Oh, we're so grateful. So welcome to all you beautiful souls. Hello, Queenie. Hello, sweetheart. I might have said some stuff that pissed off uh, the screw tubers, so we'll just we'll just hang out over here for a minute. <laughs> they won't let me connect. I tried through Streamyard. I tried tried through the. Um, give me one second. Let's get some frequencies on. All these mind games are just too much. For someone with trauma. Oh, just, just being able to connect <laughs> in this world is a blasted joke. They got all kinds of sick jokes. I don't find it very funny. Not impressed. I had a whole different plan. We, we're going to have hula hoop therapy going on. I'm teaching people to just chill. Everybody just hang out, dance. Some people are afraid to leave their houses. Some people are afraid to do all kinds of things. And they're searching the internet instead of searching inside of themselves. So I'm, I'm just kind of blown away by what's going on here. A lot of us are grieving. There's a lot of people grieving, and we just really want peace and all this mental trickery to stop. All of it. All this abuse of power and control. Do not fear. I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41 and 10. Our precious creator. Uh, the sun. Ooh, the sun sets free. See, it doesn't matter how you spell it if it sounds the same. S-O-N, S-U-N. And it would say something totally different in another language. The letter S means nothing in China. It's all symbols. And once upon a time, there were indigenous of the entire world. Healers. Medicine people. Ooh, two be strongs. I'm going to strengthen you and be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them before. For the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. That's Deuteronomy 36, 31 and 6. 
Now, a lot of people haven't, might be new here. Yes, and me too, indoors. I, I do go to the park, though. I like to go where there's not people. Huh? Certain places are more susceptible to men on chemicals trying to lure you back to somewhere. Give me a second, let me blow my nose. The, the sun is shifting into cancer, but listen, Mars and Venus are about to do a conjunction in cancer. I was just looking on Earth Sky News. I gotta set this for something else. In 13 sign astrology, see they removed the ninth sign, Ophiuchus, the healer, the divine feminine at the galactic center of the universe. And our total solar eclipse back in December 1214 was in Ophiuchus, number nine of a 13 sign chart system. They have deliberately changed everything under the sun and put man-made rules man-made time, man-made symbols, and programmed so much hate in this world. A grief card here. An acceptance. Sometimes we allow our loved ones to be fully dead before we allow ourselves to be fully alive. A lot of people are grieving, and I don't think that that grief ever really goes away. Grief is the loss of anything, but some of us have lost somebody very important to us. And it's a different journey when you're walking with a hole in your heart. In loving memory of my angel, Kayla Nicole. And all those amazing artists we've lost too soon. All those beautiful souls. My child was born a girl. So it became my life mission to make sure that nobody ever has to feel this way again. Genesis 127, made in the image and likeness of God. Revelation 21 and 4, wipe away every tear. And my child didn't believe in Jesus because we are church abuse survivors. make sure that women and men are safe from predators. To all the amazing artists we lost too soon. I have a lot of people trying to send me their personal videos over here. And my brain is still healing from finding my child cold and blue on the floor after I fought so hard to keep her alive. And so I don't watch a lot of videos anymore. I teach on YouTube. And I miss my child very much. And I'm really doing my best to get through all of this sober. And put on a smile 
and keep walking forward without the use of drugs and alcohol with plants. I miss that kid. And I don't think I've ever experienced so much heartbreak in my life playing mind games with my dog. And I just want to go to the ocean and put my child's ashes in there. That's all I want. We've been having all these stupid mind games with all these masks making us with PTSD not breathe. It's not very loving or kind. I stayed at home. I learned to order my stuff off the internet and stop going to the store. Get harassed by the mask police everywhere we go. And now they won't even let us leave the country without a shot. Can you believe that? Prayer. Dear guardian angel, help me dissolve past guilt or regret. Help me to see that it's always imperfect in divine order. Help me let go of the fear that I project on my future. Help me to live fully within each precious moment and feel your eternal love within and around me. Help us to realize and fulfill our true potential and we thank you very much. We're so grateful. Yes, we are so strong. Conflict in our feelings. Lots of people are not allowing their feeling being. We're afraid to cry. To process our pain. They've locked me away so many times for crying so hard. And I just don't want to go hang out in the psych wards anymore. No, no drugs are going to heal this. Conflict. Feelings which you have suppressed for a very long time are yearning to be acknowledged and expressed. You are torn between what you think is the right thing to do and what your heart wants. And this is the primary cause of stress in your life. We, your angels, urge you to follow your heart. Do what you would love, not what you think you should. And not what everybody else thinks that we should do. When we have shocking things happen to our body that our brain is really not equipped to handle, we are not supposed to be dealing with all this stress, all this pain, all this heartache, all this stuff. It's, it's too much. It's extra. We need time and space to heal. Every single person all over the world, you guys, is like wanting peace no matter what religion no matter like there's prophecy in everything that says one day we'll all have peace and that's really what we all seek and what we want some people do like drama actually that's that's not true that everybody wants peace some people love chaos dear precious spirit help us always to remember that this present life is but a fleeting moment within eternity. And our spirit never dies. Oh, the ways my my baby still speaks to me. My angel are amazing, but I can't be always distracted with this world. Help us to always remember that you exist within everyone and everything. And help us to remember that love is all there is and that all else is an illusion. Even death, even time. Thank you so much, precious spirit. People are scared of Jesus, scared of God. Some people don't even believe in God. They have been so badly wounded that they don't believe in it. The spirit that's infinite, our spirit. When we leave this earthly body, our spirit lives on. Absolutely it does.
let's carry on here. Expressing our own divinity. This is a, a big deal with Mars and Venus coming up here, I do believe, in Cancer. Cancer means family. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Let's have three. Will it be the power of three? Pluto's in retrograde and Sagittarius in J Jupiter and Capricorn are also in retrograde. I mean Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn is in Capricorn in 13 sign astrology. Don't overdo it. Another one flew out, actually. Don't overdo it. Always do your best. This is ancient Toltec wisdom. Always do your best, but don't overdo. When you overdo, you deplete your body and go against yourself. And it will take you longer to accomplish your goal. So keep it simple. That's one of our recovery skills. Always do your best again. The fourth agreement. Honor yourself. Adjust your crown. Honor the man or woman that you are. Take the risk, risk to express your dream. Taking action is about living fully and expressing what you are. Who you are. Do not take anything personally. This is one of the hardest agreements. Refuse to eat emotional poison. Just don't accept it. In the Kaibalon, it's all about mental transmutation. Nothing anyone does is because of us. It's something in them. Taking things personally makes you pray for predators. They can hook your attention with one little opinion. And feed you whatever poison they want. Refuse to eat poison. We do not have to accept it. Let go of self-judgment and blame. It's be impeccable with your word. Our words are energy. Like our thoughts. Being impeccable. You take responsibility for your actions. But you do not judge or blame yourself for anything. Oh yes, taking accountability for our stuff is a very important movement. You know, I was gonna do my chart. I got sidetracked because it wouldn't let me connect again. It would not let me connect. <laughs> now there's some religious people that do not like these cards and that's just fine. They don't have to stay and hang out. They don't have to leave nasty comments. They don't have to say a word. They can just click off. That's what they can do. They are free to exit. Stage left. Kindly. We appreciate. We appreciate the kindness. Yes, we do. Uranus is in Aries. I think your honest is in retrograde as well. I do know that religious people do pay attention to the shifts, to the shifting moon, the shifts in the sky, because that is prophecy in the Bible, actually. Let's continue. Continue carry on. We do love Jesus here. We love everyone. We honor all walks of life. We honor all forms of love and healing. Universal love and healing is what it is.
night. Love you too. We honor all walks of life. I've got my YouTube people over there. I'm um, wondering how they can get over here. Oh, the connection, connections, uh, connection issues. It's it's not the first time this has happened. I don't even know who all has a, a Facebook. Most people don't. A lot of them don't. They say they don't have social media, but uh, but YouTube is very <laughs> social media. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, right? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, good, we're looking for peace. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Seek peace and that's what you find. If you seek bad news, you're gonna find bad news. If you click on bad news, you'll get bad news. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's John 14, 27. This is Matthew 25. And 21. I'm actually going to do some more of these. We do love Jesus a lot. Best day of my life was when I found out just how much Jesus loves me. We are so grateful. For the loving, healing words, the good news, the peace, the love. Thank you, precious Christ, Jesus. We are so grateful for these healing messages. Yes, we are. He that believeth in me the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. It's John 14 and 12. Watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation, is Matthew 26 and 41. It looks like the test in the wilderness, like Matthew 4, when Jesus was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And they say the devil came to tempt him. It was all in his mind. The devil was like, if you're really the son of God, why don't you turn this rock into a loaf of bread? <laughs> Ask, and you shall receive, and that your joy may be full. John 16 and 24. Sometimes we stand in the way of our own blessings, and we're actually running into a brick wall. Running into a brick wall. Our own blockages. Sometimes it's it's us. Sometimes it's us standing in our own way. I haven't done these cards over here in a while. I hope we don't experience any persecution. Oh, we just won't even invite that in here. There are a lot of people that are having depression, anxiety, because of all the fear, chaos, and confusion. So our job is to bring some good news for everyone, right? God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference just for today. We are so grateful. We do recover. Communicating clearly. 
in the language of letting go. Today we will communicate clearly and directly in our conversations with others. We will strive to avoid manipulative, indirect, or guilt-producing statements. We can be tactful and gentle or assertive if necessary, and we do what is right in the moment. Honest, open communication is, a, is from the heart. Honest, open communication. These are the language of letting go cards. A lot of people have their throat chakra activated but they are not healed. They're not doing their healing yet. Some people are refusing and rejecting to face themselves, take accountability for their own stuff. Some people are telling the words of God for judgment and condemnation. Ooh, we work on codependency, healthy giving, not codependently enabling. Today we will practice healthy giving, understanding that caretaking and compulsive giving don't work. We choose what we want to give, to whom, when, and how much. It takes time to learn how to give in healthy ways. It takes time to learn to receive. Balance will come. Yes, it will. Uh, focusing on peace. That's what we all want. Just trying to find my peace of mind. Today we will focus on a peaceful pace rather than a harried one. We will keep moving forward gently, not frantically. We will let go of our need to be anxious and upset. And we will replace these feelings with calmness and harmony. Yes. At the end of the day, we'll find our peace of mind. Give me one second.
I'm ch my my people over on the YouTube are trying to get over here. How do you give them a link to my my Facebook? Uh, there's a lot of people really having a hard time sleeping. So I like to bring some nice, peaceful, good news for people who have a hard time sleeping. People that are trying to make it through this life uh, without the use of drugs and alcohol. Those of us that are doing our best to use all these natural ways of healing. Opposite to emotion or justified guilt. If you make a mistake or behave poorly and hurt someone and then feel grateful for the guilt that follows, then feel grateful for the guilt that follows since it means you care about others and your relationships with them. Nonetheless, many of us sink into the guilt and make it worse through avoidance rather than improving the situation through opposite action. If you hurt someone, then seek that person out and apologize. Make amends, commit not to making the mistake again, and then let go. Take action today if you owe someone an apology. Those are dialectal behavioral skills. Because sometimes in our lives we pick up behaviors that aren't the healthiest for us. And our little people in our lives pick up on all of our emotions. Because everything is energy in this world. Thoughts are energy. Words are energy. With the power to create or the power to destroy. A lot of this I learned through my trauma classes in prison. For abused women, learning coping skills, breathing skills, without the use of drugs and alcohol. Count your blessings. Practicing gratitude does not involve pretending that things are okay when they are not. It simply involves acknowledging that pain and pleasure can exist at the same time. Research has shown that noticing and focusing on the positives is beneficial to our mood and general well-being, changing our perception. List as many things you can think of that you have to be thankful for. We could all think of everything wrong with the world and tick up pages and pages, right? Can we see what all is right? What do we have to be grateful for? So pick one to meditate on for five minutes every day. Make a gratitude list every day we wake up. We can also add this list to this list daily in the form of a gratitude journal. Those are some of the recovery skills that we went through. Those are antidotes for anxiety, I believe. No, beating the blues, depression. I'm Heather and I struggle with suicidal depression. But I keep getting up and dusting myself off. Every time I'm kicked down, knocked down, dragged down, kicked while I'm down, spit on, just keep getting back up. Antidotes for anxiety. It's not all about you. I repeat. It's not all about us, right? People who struggle with stress and anxiety tend to take things personally. Well, that's one of the four agreements. But when we believe that every comment is about us, our feelings can easily get hurt and we remain stressed out. What was the last comment you can think of that hurt your feelings? And how can you tell if you are taking something too personally? Should I be angry? 
at the person who gave my child the heroin? Or should I be angry at China who puts fentanyl in it? It's underground shipping to the United States. Or should I just forgive them all and carry on with my life? And not take it personally. And realize that it was them, not me. And my child's spirit is still very well alive. Still very well here and alive. Our spirit never dies. My child left me so many notes saying how tired she was. It's very painful trying to live up to this false world's expectation. My child and I are suicide. The suicide squad. I've attempted suicide so many times. One day I decided I needed to learn how to love myself. No matter what the people say, I'm gonna love me anyway. Cause it's my life, I can't let go. So I'm not really here for approval of human beings. I don't really have much left to lose. So we'll get a native spirit card here. We work with energy of all types. Shamanic Native America. My life has never been the same since I've done ayahuasca and went to those Native American healing retreats. So I tend to spend most of my time alone. I feel like an alien in this world. And so did my child. So I go to the park and I go places where I know I'm not gonna be preyed upon, that I'll be respected. The children, they're awesome. The animals too, that none of the animals are wearing masks. I asked them if they had to go check Facebook or, or YouTube for their answers. And if they, um, have to go fetch the paper every morning. And how many COVID deaths they had? The squirrels? They said they don't even get the paper. They said they don't even have the local news channel. The squirrels. They aren't even wearing masks. They're just living. The song of the wild. The rainbow. It's a sign of a new covenant. Hallelujah. And we'll go to the sacred mountain. That looks beautiful. It looks peaceful. Very peaceful. That's, I'm just trying to get to somewhere. Back out in the country, out of the city. I keep running into men who hurt my daughter. My child. They show up at my house even. And I just need a holiday away from here for a while. That's all I want. And I think I deserve that. I get attacked enough for everything else. I'll be blessed if I don't let people attack us for using beautiful cards to tell the same story. New horizons await you. Hallelujah, we'll take it. We have to release all the things that no longer serve us. <coughs> For the new moon on the 7-9. That's my child's father's birthday. New moon in Gemini. You're ready to savor the wonders of the world. Take some risks. Answer the call of the wild. Step out of your comfort zone. Live passionately. Take steps in the direction of freedom. Oh, we are so grateful for freedom of breath, freedom of choice, freedom of expression. Hallelujah. We love being free. Oh, it's wonderful. 
expand beyond your limitations and boundaries. Maybe it's time to take a journey or do something new and exciting. Hallelujah. I can't wait. Your native spirit wants you to know you are entering a period of expansion and going beyond your self-imposed limitations. Even if you feel hesitant, this is the time to try something new and do things in a different way. You might even visit far off lands or wild natural places. Adventure often entails risk, but without it, life can become look, lack, lackluster and stagnant. There's a vast, new, and wondrous vista just around the corner, but you'll never see it if you don't venture out. So the journey says plan a trip. Ooh, we're going camping. Take, take some classes that you get you out of your comfort zone. Try new styles. Do the same things that you've always done, but in a new and different way. Push beyond your boundaries and our limitations. Step out of character and spend time in the wilderness. Now see, this was about our reading last night on YouTube even. Stepping outside of our comfort zone. Daring to be different. Daring to be wild and crazy and free. Marching to the beat of our own drum, fearlessly. Sacred mountain. Song of the wild into the sacred mountain. Be still, it says, and take the time to move into the silent place within yourself. Locate your eternal source of power. Meditate. Wait. Do not move forward until it feels right. Surrender to stillness. Do not take action. If you observe rather than react, you claim your power. Your native spirit wants you to know, yes, it's very uh, good to become an observer. There is a point to react and stand up for yourself, but there's a difference between acting, reacting, and overreacting. Your native spirit wants you to know from the vantage point of the sacred mountain your power grows in silence you'll find your sacred witness it is the dwelling place of your soul in peace seek and discover your truth move past the bustle and clatter of life into sweet quietude if you're in pain don't lash out don't go into it until you find the source so that it can be healed. Resist the temptation to indulge in feelings of stress, urgency, and emergency. Your power is born in silence, in stillness. This peace gives birth to your serenity. Seek solitude to listen to the voice of your higher self and awaken your inner wisdom. So the journey says travel to the peaks of Halag Mountains. And if you can't do this in person, travel in your meditation. Imagine yourself atop a high peak. You can see the world in all directions. Give thanks and offerings to mountains whenever you encounter them. The spirit of the mountain will deeply appreciate your gift. It still comes back around gratitude. And being grateful for, for the nature, for the beautiful things right out. Heaven is right on our doorstep. And I know sometimes it's really hard to see the good when there's so much fear, chaos, and confusion surrounding us. Oh, trust me, I know. 
I had a, a ball on the lake the other day, embracing my inner child, took some of my child's ashes, asked my child to help me see what I need to release so I can be the best person I can be since I'm no longer a mom. I asked to take my dog to the ocean, my ex. He's been telling me that she's been dying for two and a half years and she's too sick to travel. And I recently found out he's got another girlfriend and they had a baby. So they take my dog to the beach and she's not too sick to travel. And he just kept my dog. to hurt me because I left him. It's the only thing he could do. So I send them blessings. So I can step into my divine calling for wishing on the harvest moon. Let's have another coin of the moon oracle. I just don't know how much more shock and heartbreak a one person can take. Hit me with your best shot. No thanks. I can't take any more heartbreak. So I've been walking alone since I did ayahuasca. My child was angry, wanted to know what happened to her mother after ayahuasca. Eight, my child was eight, 1998, a life path number nine. Fruition, 37, that's a nine. 98 is when my child was born, actually. My child left me so many letters. It's so tragic when we lose our beautiful children. As the seasons turn, there is always a time when all the potential of the spring beginnings is manifest. The crops grow tall and are ready to harvest. And they have done this from a fallow field into which we have planted seeds. The trees have flowered and now there is fruit to pick. It's time for the harvest. So our mantra for this card is, I welcome the joyous fruition of all the intentions I set. When we are able to bring something to fruition, whether it be a planting, a project, or a change in ourselves, it is the perfect time to celebrate all that we are grateful for and to mark our achievement. We may have worked very hard to bring this new situation into reality. We may have been patient in the way we have worked over time and sacrificed much, so much, to make it happen. The harvest moon is the time to be happy about our successes and share it with others. Our ancestors would dance and sing and have community festivals of thanks to celebrate the fruition of all that hard work and to thank the gods and goddesses for their assistance. These times of high energy are also times to really focus on your body as they can be quite taxing on our systems. If we don't get take care, it is often the time we can get ill if we're not taking our best care of ourselves. So this moon normally falls on the moon closest to the autumn equinox in the northern hemisphere. And we just have the summer solstice here, so that's not until September or October, September. The companion stone or meadow for this is garnet. And the path, the illuminated path. She looks like she's been sitting in darkness, like it's Alice in Wonderland. And over there on the path. She's manifesting everything she worked hard for. She's got a different kind of mask on. 
she can breathe just wonderfully. They don't, she can even see. It's a different kind of mouse. You know, Horus and the Ankh is about eternal life and the eternal breath of life. The Ankh, before a cross was used for crucifixion, the breath. Nobody can take the breath of life away from humanity. I'm sorry if anybody was that confused. They thought they could control us. My mom harassed me and my child. Some of the women and their OCD tendencies just about drive us freaking bonkers through this whole shenanigans. All that OCD worry and fear they put on us is a non-essential. This stuff's been going on for far too long. I see they're in the UK, they keep saying they're locking people down more and more. My UK subscribers, that's why I was over here worrying about it because some of them can't even sleep at night. And we focus on the sex abuse survivors, the abuse survivors. Some of us are having flashbacks. That's what my YouTube channel's about. It's to help all of us who are healing and recovering from all this stuff in times of world chaos, lies, lies from the devils. The Waxing Crescent, number six. Shit. There's a ladder to a new beginning and a new vision. All she has to do is take the first step. The way is open for you. The path is illuminated. Begin the journey now. Respond and take action. We must be courageous and move forward. So the mantra for this card is, I am open and responsive to the opening of the way. When we accept where we are, acknowledge what needs to change and grow beyond and grow. Wait, hold on. Acknowledge what needs to change to grow and begin to love ourselves more completely. The direction of our lives begins to change. We often decide we want to follow a more authentic way for ourselves and our desires become more aligned with the needs, wants, and values of our true selves. Imagine we are lost in a dark forest and can hardly see. There is no visible path and every way looks exactly the same. We feel burdened by shadows and are not sure we should even move because we are so paralyzed by fear and uncertainty. Then the sunshine somehow breaks through the clouds and leaf canopy and there ahead is a path illuminated in golden light. It is clear now. The direction we should head. The path is not only visible, but it's inviting us forward. And so, instead of just standing there, we can't wait to step on it and move forward. The path is lit, and now it's time to walk upon it. So the companion stone or metal is pyrite. Hey, that's that fool's gold. Pyrite. Oh, those boys are blowing more stuff up. It stays uh, Independence Day for days around here. They want freedom so bad, they just keep popping off those fireworks. They don't really even care what time it is. Half the time they're drunk. You know damn well it isn't any women down there. It's the boys. Oh, it's gotta be blowing their stuff up. Needing their guns. So 
Well, those are beautiful cards. What I think I'm gonna do is get one of these Mayan cards, the Mayan messages. Oh, the universe has our back card, just flipped out of that deck. Always the universe has our back. I see these Mayan cards here. I've got these chakra energy cards too. I've got amazing healing cards. A lot of them, the authors are from Australia. So we, I use like all these universal cards. And I can tell when they're from over down under because the words are, are, are different on the spellings of words. Um, like colors here in America, it's C-O-L-O-R-S. It seems like they shortened um, some of our English. And it seems Australian English matches British English better. British English. It's funny, my great-grandfather, my, my nanny's father, she was British and Scottish, and he was British and Scottish, and he died in New Zealand. He was a pharmaceutical chemist. So, I'm actually like, trying to put all the pieces together as to what happened with the pharmaceutical chemist. My child was a little chemist making not so good things, learning on the internet how to make things that would hurt you, hurt her, hurt others. And I couldn't just get that kid to just stop and breathe and say I'm safe. When you've been chased and bullied and tortured most of your life. And fed drugs that are going to make you even more paranoid. I'm so grateful that child is not suffering at the hands of abuse anymore. And at peace. So very grateful for the best 22 years of my life. I'm so grateful nobody can ever hurt my baby again. Ever. Ooh, it's a firework for that one. Greater cycles. Nine. Ciclos mas grandes. Ciclos mas grandes. You'd have to keep saying it and practicing. Silos, silos, HB silos. I don't know. I need some Spanish teachers. Someone to help me with my Espanol. Mas grandes, grandes, the R, R. See here in America, it's a hard R. Like my name is Heather. And that's how they taught me how to say Heather. My mother, Heather. But over in the UK, it sounds like Heather. So the H doesn't even really sound. And the R is like non-existent. It actually sounds like an A. Ether, it rolls off the tongue more smoothly. When I say my name in English, British English, I would be Ether Dawn. See, it's all just language. It really just depends. So let's see what this nine is. That's the Mayan signs for number nine. Now I study the Mayan messages as well. Study the Toltec. I need some help with my Espanol. We'll see if we can manifest someone along the way that knows a little more Spanish. Greater Cycles. It's on page 133. Ooh. Greater cycles. The thread of grand design in the tapestry of light. On the loom of the great cycles, weave your pattern. Dreamweavers, 
That's me. I'm a Mayan monkey number nine. Oh, gosh. We are the weavers. Qualities, completion, expansion, mastery, larger cycles of time, fulfillment, and grand design. Nine is the ray of greater cycles, the foundation of self-opening to the four points of measure and cycle. It is the grand design, the unfolding order of the larger pattern. <clears throat> With nine, you are being offered the embrace of longed for completion. Fulfill your pattern, your circle. Embody the mastery and wisdom you came to express. This ray asks you to be rather than try to be. Embody the wisdom of the larger cycles. Become the one who shines the light for others. You are the humanitarian whose being unfolds the larger pattern of the new earth. In the grand cycle of time, nine is the number of completion and expansion. What is it that you are being asked to complete? Can you see the clues to the cycle of completion? As you expand, shed old patterns that do not support your growth. So it's a good time to release anything that no longer serves our highest good before the new moon. That could be thoughts, beliefs, um, people. It could be channels. It could be groups. It could be things that aren't helping us reach our fullest potential. Habit. It could be things in our environment. We could be getting rid of physical things as well. It's kind of like spring cleaning. Every, every full moon you start doing it. You can do it anytime. But many people do it by the cycles of the moon. As you expand, shed old patterns that do not support your growth. Receive completion's fulfillment. You are poised on an arc of a grand cycle of time. In this cycle, time and space fold. Past and future merge and lifetimes meld in completion. Join in the fulfillment of the mystery of the triple triangle by offering your mastery to be woven into the larger loom of reality. So awesome. That's me, nine. And my child ascended this earthly realm of nine, nine of 2020. So nine, nine, two, two. She was 22 years old. She was cremated on nine, 11. Cleansed and purified. Of all this false world's beliefs. Let's get one of these chakra cards. Sweet child. 9922. 22 years old. I had only been 22 for three weeks. That's the shirt my kid was wearing. Falcons. And the hawk keeps coming to visit me. That's a hawk feather right there. Determination. Never give up. Never ever give up. Jupiter and Saturn retrograde are bringing destiny and fate. Believe in miracles. Stepping into our divine calling. We are the kings and queens. It wasn't just meant for Elizabeth to get a crown over there in the UK. 
Elizabeth the second or the Pope or all these people to make us believe that we were less worthy than them. Oh, I do. They have it twisted. They got it all the way backwards. Number 16. This is our solar plexus chakra. Determination. That's number three on our chakra energy center. The solar plexus. So we should be getting enough sunlight in our eyes and on our skin. Our most absorbent, largest organ. Blockages in the solar plexus could be... Um, OCD struggles with beliefs. A lot of people are afraid of the sun right now. And there are some really strange things going on in the world. Determination. Don't let anyone else's beliefs control our reality is the real thing. That's the real thing. To follow and honor our heart and our own self. And not be swayed by the media. You've called this card into your awareness today as a reminder of the power and importance of determination. This powerful energy is calling you to align with it as you bring out the determination that lies within you. Everything at some point requires that extra energy to push it to the next stage of creation. Determination and will are the keys to amplifying your desired outcome at this time. Ooh, I got an H on my nose. You may have been working hard on certain project and have come to a standstill. You may have doubts and negative thoughts may be overshadowing your dreams. It is natural to have doubts. However, pulling this card is a sign that it's time to get focused and determined. These are salmon that are swimming upstream. Just keep swimming. Absolutely. Keep swimming upstream, my loves. Nothing in the world can take this dream from you. Allow the fire in your belly to rise as you bring forth the energy required to move to the next stage in your manifestation. It's time to be focused and clear on your outcome. What is it that you would like to create? What are your desires? You are the only one to make this happen. And it's important to keep your eye on the goal. Don't let go. Oh, that's a good song. Off the Set It Off soundtrack. Do what needs to be done and make it happen. When you feel like all the odds are against you and you want to give up, know that you have the determination to succeed. This powerful energy lives inside you and is ready and waiting for you to surrender to its calling. Call forth the power of determination to once again bring you to alignment with your dreams and desires. It's truly amazing what you can achieve when you put your mind to something and apply determination. That is a great trait of a champion athlete. It's time for you to be a champion and go for what you desire. So the affirmation is, I am an unstoppable being of love and determination. That's a 716. Unstoppable Lexia. And that's on page 55. See, we had our 555 five, five year. Because 2021 equals a 5. 555. Five, five. 15 adds up to 6. King James of Bible had 66, 66 books in it. And before all these churches took over all of our lands, our church was the earth. Our father was the sun. There have been people fighting over the land for far too long. I mean, far too long. Trying to take over everybody's land. The land belongs to great spirit. 
I say that again. No one owns or controls the land, the people, or anything in it or on it. The land belongs to Great Spirit, our precious creator. No matter how many names people come up with, no matter how many times they argue over which religious scholar was the best. That's why I consider myself an omniist. I believe in everything. Everything healing and everything love. I was baptized. I did study Christ. I studied the New Testament. The words of Christ. To become like Christ. To become like God. To have mercy for the weak. And stand up to those who abuse us. Yes, Christ did flip tables, so people better not get it twisted at all. He was both fully human and fully divine. Lilacs, that's the tree out there for my child. A three-season lilac. Strengthen your faith, 42. That's Mayat in the Egyptian tribal councils. We weigh our heart against a feather at the end of our lifetime. So no matter what kind of God anybody believes in, the point is to love ourselves now. Religion is for those who fear hell. Spirituality is for those of us who have already been there. And we use whatever tools it takes to bring faith, hope, and love to our suffering humanity, all our brothers and sisters all over the world. We're all one race, the human race. And all of our lives matter very much to our great and wonderful and precious creator. Lilac strengthens your faith, activates your intuition, and increases your psychic abilities. It is a soft, gentle color that encourages you to expand your spiritual awareness and improve your connection to the divine. Free yourself from old patterns and regain your inner power with lilac. Strengthen your faith by bathing yourself in magnificent lilac light. Faith. That's in Hebrews. Faith, faith is believing in things that we cannot see. Faith is a strong belief in something that is not obviously visible to the eye, it says here. Too often people give up just before something incredible is about to occur. Lilac is here to remind you to have faith in the divine. Ask for what you would love to occur. Then rub your third eye. Imagine that you have lilac magnet in your third eye that will start attracting your desires to you. Activate this magnet by visualizing it and saying activate. Then rejoice internally knowing that your request has been answered and say thank you in advance, right? That's a manifestation. Not focusing on lack, not saying I want. If I'd just be happy if I ne have that next um, Mac notebook computer. If I could just get that next video game, my life would be complete. Or if I could have the next Xbox, or a um, thousand dollars, right? No. If we want to be happy, be happy. It's a choice. Often we are our own roadblocks in the law of attraction. It's what we're focusing on and holding on to. I know my angel loves to see me sing and dance. I even hear my angel sometimes say, get up mama, you have to keep going. We have big works to do. when I'm having another breakdown, sobbing on the floor. A song will come on that makes me sing and dance again. That makes me smile. I used to sing and dance for that kid all that kid's life. To strengthen your faith by a lilac colored filter, Stick it on a window of your house where the sun enters the room. 
so usually on the east or the west side, the rising sun. Sit next to this window and allow yourself to be bathed in the magnificent lilac light. Say, with every breath I take, my faith in myself and the divine is renewed. I am ready to receive the highest love and abundance. Yes, yes we are. Let's put that right here. Determination. The lilac. We are ready to receive. Bring us the highest love. The highest forms of healing. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. So whoever you are, wherever you are in the whole wide world, I hope you know how beloved in you are. Each and every one of us matters in the eyes of our creator. There is no religion that's better than another. There's so many Christians and people with religious walks of life that seem to think that they are chosen more so than others who do not believe. My child didn't believe in Jesus because we were abused in Jesus' name. My child's parents, my child's grandparents, the fathers, are missionaries in Costa Rica. And he sexually abused my child from age six and under. I have I had to learn about forgiveness. I'm to the point I've been so badly abused by men that I'm not sure if I ever want to be with a man again. And I think my Jesus would understand why I wouldn't want another man to touch me. My Jesus actually does understand. I have a very close relationship with Christ. Speaking of sex abuse, how many of us would hate ourselves so much and the shame from churches and abusive men has made us hate ourselves and our own sexuality. Church buildings that might teach us that we're going to go to hell. For doing something that's natural for humans. While well, they take our children off the street and abuse them. Churches. Welcome them in to promote more shame. And rejection. It's kind of amazing the hypocrisy that one human might feel righteous enough to say that another is going to burn in hell for being gay, for being different, and abuse us even more. Hell is a state of mind, it's fear, the lowest vibration. The lowest chakra. The devil doesn't even exist. It's all in the mind, a battlefield for the mind. And God isn't just off in heaven somewhere. The male dominant God and the white Jesus that's waiting to persecute everyone. If we remove the judgment from God, and sum it up in one sentence. God is love. Then none of the humans should be walking around judging others. Jesus said, do not judge. 
So does it matter if I'm using a Bible to teach these words? Or cards with pretty pictures? Do I have to be an ordained minister? Or was I just baptized in the name of Christ? The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. It's pretty obvious that a father and a son do not make a child. So Rome did that. They did keep Mother Mary. King James removed the feminine completely. So our sexuality. King James used to burn people alive and Rome used to crucify them. Now they throw you in the psych ward for having the same visions and put you on all kinds of drugs if you'll allow them. Sexuality is a natural part of life. Embrace and enjoy your intimate, sensual, passionate nature. Take time to explore your sexuality. How do you feel about yourself? Do you feel sexy? attractive and happy with your body or are you judging yourself too harshly you need to let go of any old feelings of hurt shame or guilt in relation to your sexuality if you are in a relationship you need to bring some romance back and spice things up in order to make sex an incredibly fulfilling seductive, exhilarating, and orgasmic experience. You need to let go of your defenses and fears of being intimate with your partner and or yourself. Relinquish control and dive into unguarded, ecstatic, blissful passion. Be creative and communicate with your lover and find new and exciting ways to thrill each other. Or even yourself. It says that most of humans' anger stems from sexual frustration. They're overworked. They're not having nearly as much fun in life. Humans, they don't go on even just go camping for the weekend. They work all weekend, then they want to work all weekend at home. They're grouchy. I know it. Humans. They don't love their body. So the action for this card in the Heal Yourself deck says you need to love your body. Stand in front of the mirror naked and discover what is beautiful about your physical appearance and the divine body that we are given. Place your hands on your sacral center, which is your the womb area, the sacral center. on a woman usually, but it's on the same on a man, and put on some sexy music and move in a sensual, creative, uninhibited way. Do this every day for the next two weeks. If you are in a relationship, make a romantic date with your partner that will include some love and passion, romance even. Start with a sensual or an erotic massage and take it further. Ask each other, what will give you pleasure and be willing to be creative and try new things. If you are game, explore the power of feminine and masculine polarities. So the spirit inside us is both masculine and feminine. The masculine spirit in us causes us to stand up for ourselves. It's related with with strength, confidence. This it's also, even around the solar plexus chakra, the sun, that's our masculine aspect. Our moon sign is our feminine aspect. So I'm an Aries Pisces sun, the power of water and fire. Aries and Pisces. And I'm a Leo moon. So I'm also the sun card. The, the strength card is Leo, number eight. And I'm a Leo Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Rahu. So I have a lot of a lot of fire in my chart. I'm a Scorpio Midheaven, so that's my job. Over you kissing Neptune. 
This is not the chart I'm looking for. Although this is a good chart as well. We were just talking about massaging our own uh, feet and the, uh, the pressure points, acupressure. Because a lot of people are manifesting very physical pains right now. A lot of people are suffering greatly. Some are on medications that not even the CBG and CBD oil that I make is helping them because I think it's interfering. So our sacral chakra is right here too. These, it's an energy system and we must be open to receive. See how the arrow goes up. Our left hand is our receiving hand. Think of yourself as, as a power line. And if you're not open to receive, if you've got your hands blocked, um, you're gonna run out of power. If you are a giver and you're constantly giving yourself away, you will really be imbalanced. That's a codependency issue that we work on also on this channel. So our sacral chakra, when it comes to emotional eating, food addiction, sugar addiction, alcohol and relationships, revolves around, it has to do with uh, the sacral or the spleen chakra, blood sugar, spleen, ovaries, urinary tract, uterus, kidney, and adrenals. So I have a feeling that those of us that have been sexually abused and violated, women, a lot of women and men, children, we're not feeling safe. This revolves around our feelings. We've been taught our feelings don't matter. Many boys have been taught not to cry. Um, our emotional needs, and many women have been taught not to cry and toughen up. And then when we became tough, we were told to calm down. So, it's kind of ridiculous, the hypocrisy. There was nothing wrong with our heart or our sensitivity all along. So our emotional needs, boundaries, trust, warmth, intimacy, attaching and letting go. A lot of people can't let go. Addiction, pleasure, joy, and beginnings and endings. A lot of people are fearing the end of the world. Um, a lot of people are having a hard time. They're in a fixed energy. They do not want change. They are stomping their foot, screaming. Some are so depressed. They're seeing the end of the world. Um, these are all energy systems that manifest physically in our body. Pain, blockages in our very own mind. The heart is a very tricky one. Many people are not here. They're down here. Some are stuck all the way in one and they can't get out at all in fear. Or it's the color red. And even on our autonomic nervous system, because I have fainting um, as part of my panic disorder and it's intense fear. Um, and that's in the hyperphrase, when I actually faint and lose control of my bowels. When we live in adrenaline mode for so long, it is so unhealthy. I mean, absolutely just horrible for our body. We are not designed to live like this. We are designed to live in love, in the tree of love, feed the tree of love. So this is the nervous system chart. And it says um, to modulate arousal with breaks, adjust in yourself, think clearly and prevent vicarious trauma and compassion fatigue. So those of us trauma survivors have lived in adrenaline mode, fight or flight, fear for our lives, being chased and beaten for so long that sometimes we've been diagnosed with bipolar, and hyper, we're told we're too hyper. Mania, it, no, we have been living in fear for so long. Trauma, that we have a hard time being still, feeling safe. 
And if we're not moving around, sometimes the pain is so much that we're depressed and suicidal. And depression shrinks the brain. And when there's vagus nerve disruption, heart rate increases. This tells about everything, blood pressure, heart rate, the pupils, the eyes. Here is holding on to intense grief with depression, sadness, shame, and disgust. Here we would have good grief where we're processing our emotions, safe, clear thinking. It's hard to think clearly with so much going on in the world. So if anybody wants that chart, you could send me a private message if you can't get a screenshot. And I have pictures of all these and I'll get to people as I can. They're in my photos, rainbow energy systems and all the addictions related including technology and social media addiction. We also study the, the tree of life and the separate energy, mercy versus severity. And from this vision, I made the star of David on my own paper, poster board, because my child is the star of David. I think I'm going to go after this. This is my tree of life I made. So when we unite our feminine, the womb, feminine is down like the womb, and the masculine is upright. Fire, water, the feminine is also earth, the fire, and the swords, the air energy, the elements. If you mix red and blue, it makes purple, and you would have the tree of life, as I'm learning Hebrew, as will. And this separates for energy. And I'd really like if anybody studied the Kabbalah, if someone could please tell me, because my child's father went by Q. And my child's name was Kayla Nicole. And my child's father, my child left this world as Kayla. I mean, Kenny. Kayla Nicole ascended this earthly realm as Kenny. And her father's name was, went by Q. His birthday is seven, nine, two days. Hi, Debbie. I can't connect to YouTube. I think it's to protect me. That happens. It's to protect me. I just give up fighting with technology. It's always to protect me. When something isn't working right, it's always for my higher good. And I always have to remember that. I always remember that. I'm gonna read this letter from my child and then I'm gonna get some rest. Oh, I'm gonna take some time off this technology. It really does, it really does just burn my bubble when all this goes on. I love you too, little Debbie. It's, it's, it's to protect me. I know it is. I'm serious. I'm gonna read this letter from my child. My child doesn't want to see me sad and suffer.
I'm going to change the date on there so that chat can stay up because people are going to wonder where I went. Oh, the other one is in my Bible. Actually, I'm not going to leave that out because I can save this video and upload it. Uh, I can upload it. All these technology tricks just freaking exhaust me. It keeps, it keeps telling me that I don't have a YouTube channel for Prism to stream through. This is my child's letter. A lot of people haven't... Uh, You might have to sign up for it, Little Debbie. I don't know if you have to click on get notifications. Make sure you like it. Everything that we like and thumbs up is what you're going to see the most. It's called algorithms. So unsubscribe from the things that aren't the top on your list or whatever. Everything I need to see always pops up at the top. So I I don't know what it is. I know they they keep trying to disconnect us. I'm serious. They don't want us talking and connecting. It just is. Yes, can you send me a message? Because I was really just getting ready to go to sleep. I was getting ready to end this video and go to sleep. Can you send it to me in a message, sweetie? And I'll check it in to tomorrow. My brain is mentally exhausted right now. I'm doing a lot of releasing and healing. I'm not really doing well sometimes. My child wrote me this letter after the fire that almost killed me. 131 of 19. It says, my child was in the hospital. And my child's tears are on here. And my child was so scared that I almost died. It says, Mama, I know you haven't been there a lot, but I want you to know that I forgive you. As you read this, I want you to know how much I appreciate you. If anything were to happen to you, I don't know what I would do with myself. I cry as I write this because I love you so much more than air earth, fire, and water. I would give up all the elements to make sure you are okay. I would give up my life just to see you smile. I hate to see you cry and to argue. No more fighting. Nothing but love and prayer. I love you more than air. That's what I always told my baby. And I couldn't even get my baby to feel safe or to say I breathe. Sincerely, your only son, Kenny. My child wrote me that. I would give up my life just to see you smile. I hate to see you cry. I guess it wasn't bad English after all. When I see you smile. My child wrote that after the fire that almost killed me. I was reading this live seven hours before that fire. The Psalm of David 69. 
And my child's father's name is David. So the star of David and the shield of David and the tree of life is very important to me now. 7-9 is David Orban's birthday, my child's father. This has been a story of forgiveness, faith, redemption, strength of warriors, and so much healing and so much forgiveness. It starts within self-love and faith. Faith to move mountains. It takes faith as small as a mustard seed. Never quit. I miss that kid just barging into my room to talk to me about aliens or whatever. There could be endless tragedies, endless pain. And yet the spirit in us keeps us going. If we feed the mind, body, and soul, soul food. Thank you so much, Lonnie. Thank you so much. Blessings to you. Ooh, this is Psalms 8, a Psalm of David. My child was 819. God, brilliant Lord, yours is a household name. Nursing infants gurgle choruses about you. Toddlers talk about the songs that drown out enemy talk and silence atheist babble. It sounds like the Tower of Babel's let loose. B-A-B-B-L-E. I'm talking people are preaching the word of God to, to condemn others. Not to bring us faith, hope, and love. Not to be nice. They're being real mean over there on YouTube. I can't stream live. It's to protect me. I look up at your macro skies. Dark and enormous. Your handmade sky jewelry. Moon and stars mounted in their settings. It's very dark out there right now. It's the dark side of the moon. Our new moon's going to be on the... On the uh, ninth. New moon in Gemini. In 13 sign astrology. So we're releasing and setting new intentions. When I look, to, look at my micro self and wonder why do you bother with us? Why well, take a second look our way? Yet we so narrow, narrowly miss being gods. Bright with Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world. Repeated to us your Genesis charge. Make us lords and sheep of cattle. Even animals out in the wild. Birds flying and fish swimming, whale singing in ocean deep, ocean deeps. God, brilliant Lord, your name echoes around the world. Ooh, David's jumping for joy in nine, thanking you, God, from a full heart. I'm not going to preach right now. I was going to wrap this up. I was just going to read this letter from my child. 
I miss that kid a lot. Psalm 91. I mean, in Psalm 69, I was reading before the fire. I was rebuking, sickening of an entity in the name of Jesus. And the fire in the garage scared the hell out of me. Scared the hell right out of me. God bless you, too. And you have a wonderful, beautiful night. I'm going to go get some rest now. These technological advances wear me out. I can get around them if I just take time to think. I just need to not be frustrated. Then I can think clearly. Everyone have a blessed and beautiful night. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I love you all so much. I wish peace that far surpasses all understanding to all you beautiful souls. As far as the east is from the west. Keep shining, superstars.